Personal notice. Changes my stock and trade. If the job's too tough for you to handle, you got a job for me, George Valentine. Write full details. Standard Oil Company of California, on behalf of independent Chevron gas stations and standard stations throughout the West, invite you to Let George Do It. The Public Eye, a transcribed adventure of George Valentine. My dear Mr. Valentine... My husband is Farrell Pearson, so I'm sure you'll realize at once the importance of my letter. If you've lived long in this city or state, you must be aware of his position in politics as well as in business. Unfortunately, when you're in the public eye as we are, you're also at the public's mercy. A reputation of spotless integrity sometimes needs protection from the dangerous, selfish fools who do exist in this world. Mr. Valentine, we need your protection immediately. Come as fast as you can to our home. And please, please, don't mention this request to a single person. Sincerely... Well, there, there. You've mentioned it to me, haven't you? But Mr. Pearson, it concerns of you. Of course, really. of course, young man. I didn't mean to bar your path. Come in. Oh, thank you. We're very busy here, you know. People constantly coming to the door. Always something. It's a great trial. No one realizes. Yes, it must be. Well, uh, what is this uh, matter that your wife... The uh, letter? No, no, don't bother me. I'm a very busy man. Just on my way downtown. But it says you need protection. My dear Miss Brooks, Farrell Pearson needs only the protection of his own conscience. It's not for us to admit to fear, is it, Mr. Valentine? That's for the ladies. What? Spoken like a fool, all right, all right, have it your own way, but whatever it is, you take it up with my wife. But don't you even know... She that... handles all these little matters, besides I'm giving a speech tonight. So nice to meet you both come again sometime. But wait a minute. If you can't be bothered, at least tell us where your wife is. She'll take care of it, she always does. She's standing right behind you. Goodbye, uh-huh. dear. Hello, Mr. Valentine. This way, please. Oh, I I didn't notice you were there, Mrs. Pearson. Sorry. It often happens. In here. Your husband's study? No, mine. Sit down. I can give you 15 minutes. You can? It takes two secretaries just to handle mail alone, and booking his speeches gets pretty involved. And Farrell's thinking of running for office again, you know. Yes, so I've read. And I've heard some of those after-dinner speeches of his, too. Lots of words and big smiles. And uh, very little else. Well, we're not here to argue politics, are we, Mr. Valentine? Oh, I'm not being nasty. I'm just curious, that's all. He's the great purity man. Only passing him just now, he smelled a little more human. He... Oh, I assure you, my husband only drinks at his doctor's suggestion for relaxation. Oh, yes, I'm sure. But we'll skip that. Why are we here, Mrs. Pearson? He certainly didn't seem to be worried about any threatening person. He doesn't know as much about it as I do. I've handled all the details. I gather you do that about everything. What are these details? We have a country place in the Five Lakes Resort area. Spend the weekends there. In exactly an hour and a half, Mr. Valentine, you are supposed to meet someone by the name of Baines. He apparently has a room at the Five Lakes Hotel. Baines, huh? What am I supposed to do? Read his fortune? Here. It's a printed note. Six o'clock tonight, room 20, Five Lakes Hotel. Expect to make the delivery then, signed Baines. Obviously a false name. Whoever it is... Hold it, please. Make delivery of what? Mr. Valentine, I'm asking you to serve as a representative in my husband's place. You're more used to this sort of thing... Well, now, let's be a little more honest with each other. Your husband's being blackmailed, is that it? Well, So what's the delivery? Pictures? Letters? And how much money am I supposed to take along to pay for them? Fifty thousand dollars. We just don't have that kind of money. (laughs) Well, who does? It must be quite a skeleton in the closet. 
You're supposed to find out more about this man, Baines. What he's doing is against the law. There must be some way to stop him without paying him so Look, much. Look, lady, so... what is the skeleton? What else has this guy written? You don't have to know anything about it. We're in the public eye. Everything oh, yes, we do I is... do, and never mind that we stuff. You're trying to wash your husband's dirty linen, and you know it. Now, what did he do? Take one too many, get a snoot full, get his picture taken, or did he... It's a woman. What do you think? Well, it was pretty obvious, Mrs. Pearson. But I do think you'd better tell us. Oh, I don't know. He does drink too much sometimes. He gets mixed up with people. A woman named Baines? No, no. Baines is apparently a man who knows about it, that's all. He wrote and said he knew. My husband told me that what Baines said was right. Okay, guy working with the girl. But who's the I gr- don't know anything about her. I don't want to. It was last weekend. He went out one night and... Well, it's all over. All right, I'm... all right, Mrs. Pearson. I'm beginning to get the idea. Great guy, your husband. It's not his fault. He works so hard. He, he tries not to drink, but once in a while... What I meant was his handing it all to you. Yes, when we saw him, he talked as though it wasn't even important. He didn't look that way, I know, but even Her so... Her name is Estelle something. I knew about it. I couldn't help knowing. Why shouldn't I handle it? He can't afford to be seen anywhere doing anything Can't like... even pull his own chestnuts out of the fire, huh? Any guy who walks into one like no, that... No, no, listen, please. You've got to understand... His career is the most important thing in the world to us. I've been his secretary and his wife for years. You've learned how to grit your teeth and only think of the career. Is that right? I... I wish you'd leave your detecting up to... to getting him out of this. All right, Mrs. Pearson. We all have to live, I guess. There isn't much time. I'll tell you what I know. And uh, there have been phone calls from Baines... I have some numbers. If you could check them before you talk to him. Miss Brooks will do that and phone me. Now, put yourself together and run over those facts straight. Your pure and shining husband is a dope, Mrs. Pearson. Never mind. There's a girl named Estelle. Mr. Baines? Mr. Baines? Be hard to get. Hey, Baines! Huh. Aren't you curious whether I brought the suckers 50000 or not? All right, come on out of there. Don't be so bad. Will you... Wake up, sweetheart. Uh, this is no park bench. Come on. Uh, well, what are you talking about? On your feet. You're cluttering up the rug. Oh, lay off, will you? I like it here. I haven't got all day, now come oh, on. Take it easy. You, Baines? I'm Chester. Who's Baines? Guy who hits people. Good host, friendly type. Here, take a drink of this. Make you speak English. I'd rather stay ignorant. Hey, let go, will you? I'm sorry, Mr. Valentine. It's a job, that's all. It's a... Oh. You the one took my wallet? Yeah. No good pictures, anyway. A couple of George Washington... I didn't touch your money. All right, Buster, all right. Who are you? What's going on Chester, here? not Buster. I'm the house dick. Oh, sorry, friend. Well, look, what became of the guy who took this from? His name is Baines, or... You already said that. It's a little hard to recognize him. Huh? Must have been quite a fight you guys had. What'd you hit him with, a grand piano? What an I hit... Look at him. Dead on a mackerel. Now listen, I was unconscious, wasn't I? So he got smacked over the head. That doesn't mean that I did it. Doesn't mean anything. You could have been faking, could have passed out. I got a job to do. Got to call the cops. Look, I just walked into this frame up. I'm just a patsy, that's all. I don't add any farther than two and two, Mr. Well, then get away from that phone. Here, let's take a look at this guy's pocket. No, 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 you don't. Now, who are you working for, Mr. Valentine? Somebody never heard of fair employment practice. Will you tell me what you do know about this? Sure, sure. Less than you. Yeah, I'm sorry. What else can I do? 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 
If you didn't kill him, you're at least a material witness. We've got a hotel reputation. But I got a job to do, Buster. I'm sorry. Hello, Desk. Chester here. Get me the police in town. Step on it. You better tell the boss that makes to all come. of us sorry, Buster. Uh, how to make friends and influence people. The rug's all yours, House Dick. <laughs> I went out the fire escape. George, you crazy. Five Stupid. lakes. In a burg like this, I'd be locked up for weeks. Oh, you'd rather have months for resisting oh, arrest. Be quiet, and... Angel. I got the wallet off the other guy. Bain? Yeah. That really is his name, apparently. Lives down the road here. But aren't you going back to see Mrs. Pearson? I mean, she got you into this. She must know more I'd than I'd rather she was... see this Estelle. She sounds like the type we could get a little farther with. Did Baines have any letters about her or pictures or... No, but that doesn't mean anything either. He'd no more bring that stuff to a meeting like that than I'd bring the money. Here, turn right. Guy owns a garage. A garage? Yeah, that's what his wallet says. I'm a lot more interested in his house on Pine Road. That's where it is. If he knew enough to blackmail Pearson, then what do you want to bet we'll find Estelle right there in his George, house? George, Pearson we should find. He left their house before you did. He could have been the one who came up here to five lights and... big politician the... slugging people and framing murders? Try again, Angel. I got a hunch this case isn't going to be as simple as any way you look at it. Estelle? Estelle, I, I never heard of such a person, I tell you. What's this all about? But this is where Baines lives, isn't it? For 25 years, and he's never been out of the place. That make you happy? And you needn't look like you don't believe me either, because I know I'm his wife. You're... Huh? Oh. Now, what's happened? What is it? Uh, you'll, you'll find out later, I guess, Mrs. Baines. I, I was just in a hurry to locate this place. Estelle. And... Estelle, I know. You told me. Well, take it from me, mister. Baines ain't the type to get mixed up with any girl. Besides, in a town this size, I can write you a guarantee. There just ain't any such person as Estelle anybody. Never was. Not even among the weekend people. You mean you know everyone and yes, everything? Listen. What's that? Sirens, ain't it? Must be the sheriff's call. Okay, Mrs. Baines. Thanks anyway. Uh, but wait, wait, wait. Listen. Mister, please. Uh, Baines ain't in trouble, is he? What is it? Will you please tell me what... Lady, I wish I had time to explain, but I don't. Come on, hurry up, George. But, but my husband... I, I'm sorry, lady. Maybe he was in trouble, but he's not anymore. Those sirens, I'm afraid, are for me. Return to tonight's adventure of George Valentine in just a moment. Do you know how long it's been since your car's battery has had a drink of water? Batteries do get thirsty, you know. And unless the water level is checked every two or three weeks, you may be heading towards trouble. You see, lack of water is one of the biggest reasons why they get weak. That's why it's a good idea to let the car savers check your battery regularly. They like to take care of your battery because it's just plain good business for them to help you avoid the nuisance of a feeble battery or the expense of buying a new one. Car savers also make a hydrometer test of each cell, and that gives you an exact check on the health of your battery. Above all, they watch for corrosion because a corroded cable won't let even a good battery deliver full power. All this special attention to details is just part of the vital car saver service offered you at independent Chevron gas stations and standard stations, where they say and mean we take better care of your car. Now, back to tonight's adventure of George Valentine. If your name is George Valentine, right now you'd just as soon it weren't, because George Valentine is the man who slugged a resort hotel house detective and ran away from arrest for murder. The murder of Mr. Baines, a blackmailer. No, you don't enjoy being a fugitive, particularly when you don't know whom to trust. There. There, that's the Pearson place. His wife said they come out here every weekend. I don't see any lights. Yeah, but I was with her, you remember? And she said she'd take a taxi out later to meet her husband here. Yeah, yeah but I don't like George, it. George, George, there are lights, see? Huh? On the side. Pearson. 
outside porch. Just getting out of his car. He's going in the house. Oh, George, you've got to see him. He's the only one who can tell you about this Estelle and about Baines. If and the... there is an Estelle, who says there is one? But Mrs. Pearson said... And Mrs. Baines said there wasn't. Angel, listen, when the politician's wife got us into this, she was so busy trying to hide her feelings and overlook her husband's escapade that... that... you think maybe she didn't know the truth herself? That the blackmail really... Yes, yeah, something like that. He was pretty anxious to avoid us, I noticed. Well, but that's all the more reason for going in there for and talking... sticking my head in a meat shopper, you mean? Pearson may be a fraud, Brooksy, a bag of wind who should have stayed in a locker room instead of foisting himself off on the public. But he's still got influence. He could still get me thrown in jail so fast I wouldn't even know what happened. And never get a chance to find out what happened, either. Come on. What? But, George, if you Pearson's really think... inside now. No, no, his car, Angel, not him. The car? Yeah, the plates. Ever see an ambitious big shot with such a long license number? Oh. Or such a short car. Yeah. Oh, Five Lakes Garage. That's not an agency. They don't sell cars at the... Wait a minute. Here. Here's the flashlight, George. Thanks. Registered owner, Anthony J. Baines. It's Baines' car. Come on, let's get out of here. But why would he have Step Baines... Step on it fast. Five Lakes Garage, huh? Where? Oh, George, you're not going to the middle of town. Baines' garage is right in the middle oh, of yes, town. Oh, yes, I am, Brooksy. Because the only reason I can think of for Pearson driving a car from the garage is that Pearson's own car is in that garage. down to the left. Wait, wait, wait a minute, George. Huh? Policeman. Duck in there to the left, quick. Have any luck, Sheriff? Yeah, not so far. i to find him first myself, pay him back for that shiner. Uh, shiner, huh? Chester, you got goggles. If you wasn't so slow on your feet, you wouldn't oh, have... Oh, shut up, will you? I'm gonna break Hello. his... Hello. Oh, evening, ma'am. Could you tell me which way is Elm Street? Why, sure, lady. It's right wait a down. minute. I saw you under the street light. You were with a man, weren't you? Where is he? What? Oh, yes. I mean, I was walking alone, and I stopped a man to ask him about Elm Street, but he didn't tell me. He just kept on going. Hey, what'd he look like? Tall, sort of young, husky, dark coat? Yes, that's right. Why? It's Valentine. Come on. Who? Well, uh, he went down that way to the right. He seemed to be in a hurry. Yeah, thanks, lady. But where's Elm? Oh, dear. You're standing on it, lady. Get into the alley, George. Hurry. Relax, Angel. The bloodhounds went that away. Oh, George, hurry up with that lock. Now they'll be looking for me again. There we are. Back into the garage. Yeah. You want the flashlight, George? Yeah. Hey, there aren't any cars on the service. Hold it. There is one back here. Where? I don't see. Through the window. The door must be from the lube rack on the other side. Oh. Separate parking garage. Black sedan. Uh-huh. The cobwebs, you can't... Yeah, look. Nice gilt initials on the door. F.P. It's Pearson's car, George. Tucked out of sight. Nothing much wrong with it, except that headlight. What? Yeah. The fender's a little smashed in front. But nobody's been working on it. Why would Baines hide that car back here and... Uh... George, are you smoking? No, no, I'm not. Too much gasoline around and oil on the floor. Well, it is smoke, George. Huh? It's coming from the wall. Hey, Let's get... get out of here. Run, Brooksy. Oh, brother, that does it. Oh, now you're not only wanted for murder, but they'll think you started that fire, too. Oh, George. Don't what talk we... so much, Angel. I'm going to start a fire, and right now. And at last, I think I know who's going to burn. Call nothing on the front pages, mister. Might have been about a week ago, friend. Must be in your news file someplace. A week ago, Yeah, George? files ain't complete, you know. People come in, tear out crossword puzzles. A week ago was the night Pearson went out, wasn't it? When his wife said the whole business started, and the great man soaked up a few too many and got yeah, him... Yeah, here, here, try these. Guess you must be the people who make up them puzzles, huh? Oh, I confuse myself more, Buster. But, Brooksy, suppose he didn't get mixed up with a girl that night. Suppose the garage man was blackmailing him for something else. Something even more dangerous for a guy in the public eye. 
Something that would cause a broken headlight and a Wait a minute, George. Wait a minute. Yeah, hold, on, huh. hold your breath. Looks like lady found a bargain here. Yeah. Second section, George. A story about a bus driver getting off a bus. Huh? You were right. It must be. Around midnight. There were no witnesses and police have no leads. It was the bus driver's own fault, apparently. Only that was it. The man was killed, George. Run into and killed by a hit-run driver. <laughs> Hello, Mrs. Pearson. Yes, it's... Oh, Mr. Valentine, where are you? What on earth goes on? The police have been here. They're looking for... Take it easy, take it easy. I've been out with Estelle. You what? Who? That name you dreamed up. I don't understand. Estelle was the girl that Farrell said All right, all right. So he dreamed it up. I don't care. It was the obvious thing to tell me. People think blackmail girl a lot faster than they do blackmail Car? Car? Mr. Valentine, for heaven's sake. It run, lady, a week ago. Your husband's car. Well, I just wanted to tell you I've seen the evidence. It got burned up, of course, before I could show it to anybody. I don't understand. But I still saw it. Mr. Valentine. Well, I thought I'd better tell... give me that phone. No, way. Now, give it to me. I can still handle some things hey, in this hey, house. Hey, 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 what's going on there? I am. I just got back from downtown and see here, yes, Valentine. Be quiet, will you? Downtown, huh? Valentine, I've got to see you. It's not clear exactly in my mind what did happen last night. Sure, weekend. you drink so much. Save the stories. I'll see you, all right. Well, get over here. Don't jump. I'll see you in Cabin 10, Paradise Motel. And I'll give you ten minutes to get here. What? Paradise Motel? There are too many cops around your place for my blood pressure. But don't bring any of them with you. Why on earth would I? And don't play so dumb and don't send your wife. Because get this straight, friend. My assistant, Miss Brooks, isn't with me. Never mind where she is. But she knows what I know. And if you try anything funny, she tells the newspapers. Valentine. Yeah, you're being blackmailed, all right, Buster. This time by me. Come in, Mr. Piss. Get back in there, Rover. Uh, Chester. A surprise, huh, smart boy? It's me. How did you crawl out of the woodwork? I crawled after you, stupid. I've been following you. My friend, the deputy sheriff, is out waiting in the car, but he says I can have you first. Now look, muscle bone. I want to ask questions. I'm not interested in that. Crimes, you solve them. Me, I just don't like to get poked on. Buster, around. listen. I'm expecting a guy named Pearson. Sure, a big bag of wind. I know him, but that's not my... He's got the answers. You want the answers, don't you? Look, I poked you and got you into a little trouble for letting me loose, but no, that doesn't... No, I'm not interested. Besides, Pearson won't tell you anything. Wife's the only one with any brains in that family. I know. She built him out of a silver voice and a hollow leg. But he couldn't even remember what time it is. Let oh, alone... shut up, will you? There is somebody outside. Yeah, the deputy sheriff. No, Mr. Valentine, I'm afraid your party's over, so pick up your hat. Look out there. All right. All right. I'm not going to try anything this time. Besides, I'm wrong, huh? What do you mean? About Pearson. About everything. Another way it could work, isn't there? Oh, get you. A garage man was the blackmailer. That's all I know for a fact. I saw the notes. But I don't know who they were addressed to. Say, where did you meet Pearson's wife? How long have you known her? What? Oh, yeah. I pick up as I go along. Just trying to for size, that's all. Well, it's 12 minutes now. Nobody's shown up. Guess she talked Pearson out of coming. Or is he out there? Which one do you work for? You'll say almost anything, won't you? Getting interested, huh? I was hired for a patsy to walk into a ridiculous setup where I'd be charged with a murder of Baines. I advertised, so I asked for it. Only it's not as silly as it sounds. He was a blackmailer, and in the circumstances, if I kept my mouth shut, I'd get off on self-defense. Go on. Oh, you like this, huh? All right. The only trouble was I got stubborn and knocked you out before Chapter 2 could be organized. I tore around, spotted the hit-run car, and figured it out before the garage could be burned. Now, I'm out of step two. I don't cooperate. Like I point out that arranging Baines's death was an almost impossible job. Except for somebody on the inside of the hotel like you. You talk too much. I tried to get you to listen to me, but... Sure, sure. Johnny on the spot, that's you. Always. Right there in Baines' room. 
Right there, just greeting the deputy sheriff at the time of the fire. Right here, right now. Never miss a trick, that's me. Now, which one do you work for? The stupid husband who goes on a secret tear once in a while, I can't remember? Or is it you and the wife? Is that the way it works? I suppose I can find out easily enough. Just see who's out in that car waiting for you. Get away from the door. All right, it's the wife. You and her, huh? What happened? Two of you in the car that night when you hit a man and ran? Is that the secret that's so important? Just step over this way, detective. Get mad. I'm getting close. Big secret to keep from Farrell Pearson. That career his wife makes so much of. She wouldn't want to risk her hold on him, I guess. Only what percentage do you get? How do you and Mrs... Well, shut up. You said too much already. Yeah. Hey, you picked the wrong boy when you got me. We don't have to keep you. Oh, relax. I figured that out. I know what you think you're going to do. I got a job to worry about. You're under arrest. Say it real quick, then shoot fast. Get moving, I Resisting told you. Resisting arrest. Too bad I had to shoot him, Sheriff. Stop reading my mind. It's in Braille. How can I help it? You ask for it. Look out, you. Phone. Reprieve. I'll take care of it. This was your mistake the first time, remember? Oh, brother, saved by the bell. Thanks, Brooksy. You rang me just in time to... Hello, hello? Brooksy? Hello? Is this Naples Laundry? Mr. Pearson keeps calling oh, him. Oh, let him solve his own problems. He's had the wool pulled over his eyes so long it hurts. Ah, oh, he pulled some wool himself, George, thinking he can run for office. Oh, thinking... I know, I know. Dumb guy who just liked to be able to drink with the boys and can't. Or couldn't until his wife went a little too far trying to protect her pitch. Mm, I wonder if he ever did fully realize what was going on. I mean, her and that Chester and that hit run that might have exposed them, but he, he just thought it was another problem. Let his wife take care of it. Well, she took care of herself, I'm afraid. Letting dumb Chester pull a murder to get him out of the spot they were in. But Pearson didn't have anything to do with it. Gullible, that's all. A dope. Let his wife wear the pants. What? Yeah, make a career out of him. Make money out of him. Make a sucker out of him. Well, it seems to me if anybody was picked for a sucker in this case... Never it's... mind, never mind. Besides, I'm different. I'm not in the public eye. Uh, I know. Private. Keep out. Listen to the difference. In a few seconds, you will hear Geiger counters measuring automobile engine wear. The engines are equipped with irradiated piston rings, which make it possible for the Geiger counters to detect wear as it occurs. You will hear authentic scientific proof that new RPM motor oil cuts in half the wear rate of critical engine parts, doubles the life of the average auto engine between major overhauls due to lubrication. First, let's listen to the Geiger counter slowly click off the low wear rate of new RPM. Now, the much faster wear rate of a premium type oil, as designated by the American Petroleum Institute. Now, new RPM again. You have just heard Geiger counters clicking off the scientific proof that new RPM motor oil is years ahead. Yes, new RPM doubles engine life between major overhauls due to lubrication. Try it. Sold with a money-back guarantee of satisfaction at independent Chevron gas stations and standard stations where they say and mean we take better care of your car. Tonight's transcribed adventure of George Valentine has been brought to you by Standard Oil Company of California on behalf of independent Chevron gas stations and standard stations throughout the West. Robert Daly is starred as George with Virginia Gregg as Brooksy. Let George Do It is written by David Victor and Jackson Gillis and directed by Don Clark. Herb Butterfield was heard as Pearson, Georgia Backus as Mrs. Pearson, Noreen Gamill as Mrs. Baines, Bill Conrad as Chester, and Franklin Parker as the sheriff. This music was composed and presented by Eddie Dunstetter, your announcer, John Heaston. Listen again next week, same time, same station, to Let George Do It. 
Let George Do It is heard overseas through the worldwide facilities of the Armed Forces Radio Service. This is the Mutual Don Lee Broadcasting System.